Ladies and gentlemen, boys and NBs, it's season four reloaded patch day and I've got the notes. Before we get into it, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new here. 90% of my viewers this week are not subscribed to the channel. We are absolutely blowing up with over 100 new subscribers in the last 48 hours. Make sure you're one of them in the next 48. Let's get into it. All right, so obviously it is season four reloaded and it is Wednesday, June 26th, 2024, where season four gets reloaded in today's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 update. We've seen the roadmap. I don't even know how many times at this point, but we do have a bunch of new maps with Incline. This is probably the best map of the season. Das Gross, which is just Das House with a really gross reskin. Bitvela, which is really weird. They've got a bundle that's 8-bit as well. It's a whole mode they're doing. We'll see it below. Get Higher, which is Get High on another level. This one will actually have rewards, apparently, which is going to be super fun for the parkour element. We've got the new weapon of the Reclaimer 18, which is the Spaz 12. This is going to be fun because it's rumored to get an Akimbo attachment. This is going to be super fun as it is a tactical shotgun that can be fired in both pump action and semi-auto modes and it's rumored to have an Akimbo attachment. I am really looking forward to using this gun and I will have the unlock challenges at the end of the video. We're also getting the Sledgehammer Melee, which for you that like Melee, this will be a fun one. I'm hoping it has some sort of frontal execution like the sword does, but we'll see. We have a few aftermarket part kits for the season. I'm really excited for the Jack Volt for the KV inhibitor, which turns it into a two round burst sniper rifle. Hopefully this is a one shot like the Victus, the MCPR, the Car 98, and the Imperium. The Jack Gunslinger, which is a 357 conversion for the Basilisk, giving you eight rounds, making it an akimbo god because it will fire much faster as well. For new modes, we've got Mutation, which is take turns playing as a team of humans or mutants in a mosh pit of modes. Mutants possess a series of unique unique abilities that can stun, disorient, and eliminate enemy humans. Switch sides at halftime. This mode's gonna be a lot of fun with your friends. Might be fun in pubs as well. Bit Party. This is the 8-bit mode where you're probably just gonna play on that one map. Havoc. Experience a variety of wacky modifiers. First team to reach, the score limit wins. This is this is just gonna be TDM with a bunch of weird modifiers like third person, cranked, etc. thrown in. Randomly change throughout the game. Headshots only. This this is a mode that if you need to get your skill up, headshots only is going to be the one to do. It's going to be so sick. Blueprint Gunfight, super awesome mode. This is one that I have been looking forward to since they announced it in Season 1. Some new events coming with the Altered Strain continuing. This should have some actual rewards, kind of like the DNA did for the last month, but we'll see. Vacation Squad, this is going to be essentially their summer celebration. And then the last event is a Vortex Death Script. This is the Vortex playlist returning one. Once again, Death's Grass has taken over the Vortex. And then global changes for customization. The Beam Saver Blueprint will now be able to do the frontal execution like the normal Soul Render. And then attachment skins will no longer unequip. Grand Mastery calling cards have been added as well as emblems. And essentially what this is, is there's finally rewards for completing the Grand Mastery camo challenges for Modern Warfare 3, multiplayer, as well as zombies for both MW2 and MW3 guns. You'll get a calling card, a charm, and an emblem. Some Basic UI UX updates have been added. The victim calling card is now displayed on the HUD upon killing an enemy. Some bug fixes fixed an issue preventing the scoreboard from scrolling in free for all. Didn't even know that was a thing. Addressed various issues allowing incompatible attachments, so this means no more six attachment guns. Weapons converted from burst fire to full auto and now display the accurate fire rate in the detailed stats model. Proper team colors are now shown on the mini map in gunfight mode. HUD widgets now properly display down teammates in cutthroat. Calling cards are now sized appropriately in HUD splash notifications. Fixed event challenge completion splashes displaying incorrect rewards. Address and exploit allowing gunsmith attachment limits to be bypassed. Address descriptions, pros and cons for various attachments to more accurately reflect their true statistics. Progression, address and exploit allowing kills without dying challenges to be completed improperly. Improved tracking of the priceless camo. Removed duplicate jack BFB muzzle attachment unlock for the Bats B. Remove duplicate Cronin Dark KX30 muzzle unlocks for the cast off 762 and Chimera. For maps, just some genuine changes that they do every patch to get rid of some of the exploits. For weapons and attachments, we've got nerfs and buffs here. The FJX Horus has gotten in Modern Warfare 3 and multiplayer. The FJX Horus has gotten a slight nerf to its ranges, and then the Scimitar Kit got a buff. So 10% across the board to range on the Horus, and then a 
30% buff. When you add the scimitar kit, you bring it back up even better than it was before at range. KV broadside for the fourth time, they're going to try to fix the issue for muzzle attachments unequipped during gameplay with the jawbreaker conversion kit. With the Car 98, here's the big nerf, and I believe that's going to be similar with Warzone as well. Removed hip fire aim assist properties for controller input devices, decreased strength of ADS aim assist properties for controller input devices. It is in line with snipers now, and this is incredible. I'm a keyboard and mouse player, so this doesn't affect me at all. Lockwood Mark II with the Warden's Kit. They've increased the sprint to fire speed from 35 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds, which is going to make this thing a lot more of a gun that is easily dealt with. It's not going to be cheese quite as easily. Decreased maximum damage range, decreased near medium damage range, so once again, this gun has got a hard nerf. The Carrick 30 got a huge buff across the board. The Core 45, they did fix an exploit, allowing the Akimbo rear grip to be equipped with the conversion kit. Thankfully, that is gone. The ACS, the hacked equipment will no longer prompt the player to pick it up. With kill streaks, the Mosquito Drone will no longer do damage to the owner of the kill streak. That's fantastic. Mortar strikes now have no delay when called in. They send in six instead of four mortars at a time, and they take a total of three seconds to hit the target when called. Mortar strikes are going to be extremely strong now. Missile drum, they just improved the flight pathing, so it's a lot easier to use and get better shots on maps that have indoor sections. You can put it in the windows. The swarm will no longer damage its owner. The DNA bomb will actually kill people that are driving vehicles now. Ranked play, they unrestricted the MTZ 556 and the Holger 556, allowing these to go into the loophole for ranked, and this is from the testing they did back during Season 3. For zombies, we got some new content in the Unstable Rifts. I'm sure anyone interested in zombies knows what these are. They also fixed some bugs with inaccurate weapon ammo counts. Camo unlock requirements for melee weapons will no longer display inconsistently. For progression, the Prestige 14 Zombie Calling Card Challenge now tracks properly. Weapon attachments, the Lockman Shroud, when you pack a punch it with the conversion kit, will stay in full auto finally. Sniper rifles, equipping explosive ammunition will no longer block ammo mods. And all right, fellas, before we get into the full Warzone Season 4 Reloaded patch notes, I did just want to say please like the video to push this through the algorithm as far as possible, and definitely think about subscribing, clicking that noty button if you would like. I drop videos almost every single day. We would love to have you in the community. There's a Discord below if you would like to join as well. For 200 active members in there. So now let's talk Warzone. All right, I'm going to add in the Reclaimer 18 unlock requirements. It is the redacted sector of the battle pass. And for this, you have to do the first four challenges before you can do the fifth challenge. We have at number one an XP token, which will require you to get 10 operator or special zombie kills with shotguns. Then we have a large decal, 10 operator or special zombie hip fire kills. Then we have an emblem, which is five operator or special zombie kills while aiming down sights with a shotgun. And then we have a finisher, seven operator or special zombie tax stance kills with shotguns. Then you can get the Reclaimer 18 by getting five operator headshot or special zombie critical kills with shotguns. This will give you the Reclaimer 18 and I will have a video on it shortly. All right, so there's new events across Rebirth Island and Urzikstan. With Altered Stream, the DNA bomb has detonated at pop-off power, opening new pathways around the point of interest. They've completely changed pop-off. This is the first change to Urzikstan and it's covering the vicinity with a toxic chemical agent. Exercise caution, yada yada. You should now focus on getting in close to explore the outcome of this major attack. That is a hint at there being maybe an Easter egg. Updates to the map. Like I said, pop-off power has had a meltdown. The map is completely changed. New and limited time modes. We've got mutation resurgence. The resurgence variant removes all tacticals and lethals from ground loot, allowing you to focus on gathering and enhancing your operator's DNA. Discover a multitude of mutated powers. So there's a bio shield which gives you a bubble that people can't shoot into but you can shoot out of. Dive bomb allows you to just jump in the air like the old zombie jump, smash into the ground like PhD flopper almost. Which that's mutant leap as well. One of these two is the one that has the splash damage, I believe it's the first one. Toxic stim cloud, deploy a cloud that does damage to enemies and boosts squad mates speed for a short duration. So this is essentially battle rage in a cloud form that also is tear gas for the other team. Sludge sling, toss sludge grenades that explode into a toxic gas cloud on impact. The gas slows and damages enemies over time. So this one does damage as well as slowing them down. And then there's mutant vision, which allows you to see outlines of the enemies in red through walls 
hacks for a short time. Wall hacks in Warzone. Urzikstan point of interest pop off power once again saying it again. The squad size for this mode is quads only. The weekly playlist is going to give us mutation resurgence quads on Urzikstan at pop off power. We've got ranked play as always in trios. Thunder quads, battle royale, solos, duos, trios, and quads. And then for resurgence there is solos, trios for map rotation, and then quads on rebirth. There is no duos mode for resurgence again this week. It's been a while. I don't know what they have against duos. And then for gameplay, we've got the specialist perk coming to Urzikstan. They're saying, it was recently introduced to resurgence. It's a super powerful perk. It's coming to Urzikstan. Players who find specialists will immediately receive the benefits of every Warzone perk simultaneously. We know this. Can be acquired via the bunkers, but just like the speed boots, it'll probably show up randomly all over the map, and you can still buy it from the buy stations as well. And then redacted weapons. These are weapons that have eight attachments on them that can be found in the new high loot zones or in the bunkers. Then we have our new weapons with the Reclaimer 18 shotgun, which once again, just like a multiplayer pump action or semi-auto, and it's rumored to have an akimbo attachment. Then we have the sledgehammer. The Reclaimer is in the classified section of the battle pass, which just unlocked a moment ago, and the sledgehammer will be a weekly challenge. I guess they're out of the aftermarket parts for the season. Nerfs and buffs for Warzone. It's time to talk about those. And the Bow 27, one of the most awful ARs in the game, got a slight buff with the lower torso modifier being increased to 1.1 up from 1. So this is essentially nothing. The MCW did get a bullet velocity increase as well as a minimum damage or your far damage range increase of 2 per shot. Maybe the MCW might be viable without the Jack Raven kit now, but we'll see. Hogger 556 did get a near mid damage range increase. So this is the mid range from 60 meters up from 50. This is actually a pretty big buff as well as also getting a bullet velocity buff. MTZ 556 got a bullet velocity buff. M16 with the Patriot kit aftermarket part kit did get a buff to its near mid damage range. Looks like they heavily focused on 556 within the assault rifles. The MTZ 762 did get a max damage range boost from 19.05 meters up to 25.4, making this thing have an incredible first damage range. Some machine guns, the Horus, did get all kinds of buffs to the scimitar kit. Max damage range was increased, the near mid damage range increased, and the mid damage range were increased, making the Horus even better. The Striker did get a lower torso modifier increase up to 1.1 from 1, so not really much there, but it is better, and the Striker is incredible right now and then they're trying to figure out how to make the rival 9 fit the meta and with this buff they've increased its max damage range to 12.7 up from 12.19 almost nothing there once again and then the near mid damage range was also increased by about a meter and for LMGs they've buffed the RAL to do one more damage per shot meaning it takes one less bullet to get a kill in most scenarios making the RAL slightly better and the RAL is actually probably like B tier in the meta it is usable the Sakin got the same thing I don't don't think the Sakin's really gonna do anything. With the Rap H, they changed the leg modifier up from 0.95 to 1. Not a big change, but the Rap is already a demon. And then the HCR got a buff in its near mid damage range, increased from 48.2 to 50.8. Not a big change there either. With the Jack Wardens on the Lockwood Mark II, they've increased the sprint to fire speed to 100 milliseconds, up from 35. Once again, making it take longer to get your shots off. The Car 98 Okay. I said this a couple of weeks ago that this is what they were going to do, but I did not expect the change to bullet velocity. They decreased the bullet velocity on the base, no attachment, car 98, from 660 down to 620, so you did lose 40 meters per second of bullet velocity, but the big change is, all of you controller players will have zero aim assist in a hip fire, and it will feel just like all of the sniper rifles when you're aiming down scope. The max damage range was also decreased down to 55 meters from 660. 63. So you've just lost an additional 7 meters of range on the base, so you're going to lose even more once the parts are put on, bringing your maximum one-shot damage range probably to about 75 meters. They've nerfed C4 slightly to where it's not going to full-on put somebody to one-shot. They decreased the max damage to 200 down from 275, decreased outer damage to 100 from 137, decreased max radius to 6.5 meters down from 7. Mosquito Drone will no longer damage its owner. For bug fixes, they fixed an issue, causing the mosquito drone icons to remain on the mini-map forever, so you'll no longer see 30 mosquito drones
icons active at the end of every game, fix an issue causing players to be sent back to the main menu after finishing a ranked play match, fix an issue causing the tax sprint boots icon to overlap with the hold to give up text, fix an issue preventing players from viewing the Warzone rewards menu, didn't know that was a thing, fix an issue allowing expired contracts to count towards complete any four contracts daily challenge, fix an issue causing the converted SMG BP50 to use AR ammo instead of SMG ammo. That means when you convert the BP-50 with the Revenger kit, it is now a full-on SMG and it will use SMG ammo, which makes this thing absolutely a top-tier SMG option. And that's going to be it for the patches. Surprisingly, for a mid-season update, this is kind of a small one. Overall, good stuff here. The modes seem interesting for both Warzone and Modern Warfare 3. I'm interested in the unstable rifts and zombies because maybe it'll be fun. We will see. But hey, boys, that's going to do it for me. Until next time, leave me alone and like the video. When it all goes